Hi everybody, it's Richard here and welcome to the latest um, and I don't mean latest as in newest I mean the latest as in very late thread response to um, James Griffiths uh, challenge to the vinyl community can everyone show um, all of Tony Visconti's uh, produced albums on vinyl now this only, I'm only a slight bit late, only <laughs> he only did this thread in um, January 2018 so I'm only a year and nine months uh, late but anyway I thought I'd have a go. Um, I remember seeing this thread and it was in the days before I had the nerve to actually record a video for myself. Um, I was an ardent watcher of the VC videos and this is one that really stuck out and I was very close to actually recording my first video back then because it's a subject you know Tony Visconti is my favorite producer you know um, he's produced David Bowie, T-Rex, Sparks and so forth Adamant and a lot of those albums have already been shown um, I was searching the net there today to see who has done now there's probably other ones which I haven't managed to find but I did obviously see James's again I saw Graham Watson's uh, John Bellamy, Headley, uh, John Downing and Christopher Hibbler or Kibler, I'm not too sure and there's still a few that I have on vinyl that weren't shown now I know John Bellamy he had a real charge at the T-Rex and the David Bowie albums and, but there's a couple that are still I can show but before I do that I looked on the Wikipedia page uh, at all the albums that he produced and um, an eyebrow was, or two was raised because some I didn't think he did produce but he did have a say in the album and one of those, I'm going to show four albums first which he actually didn't produce but he mixed or he did string arrangements for the idiot is listed. Now I need to check again to see whether it says he produced this or it was just he had an involvement with it. But he didn't produce this. This is a David Bowie production and um, he mixed this. This is Iggy's 1977 album. He also mixed this which is the Stranglers La Folie uh, from 1981. Uh, it's a very good album. This has got Golden Brown on it but there's no production credit. Um, this, these two were not on the list but I thought I'd show them anyway and I'll always show this album whenever I get the chance because it's my favourite album of all time. He did mix uh, the Diamond Dogs album, uh, part of it, not all of it, um, but he didn't produce it. So Diamond Dogs from 1974 and a special mention has to give, be given to this one because he did the full string arrangements for the whole album of uh, Paul McCartney and Wings Band on the Run. Um, all he gets on this final is a, a thanks Tony Visconti but on the, I believe on the 20th or the 25th anniversary he gets the full credit for what he actually did. So those are a few albums. Now the ones he actually did produce and we'll finish off with the Bowie ones. I was going to Add in Heathen, but I just watched uh, John Downing when he did his 18 months ago, <laughs> or whatever it was, or 20 months ago, and he added Heathen, so I'll put in reality. So this is 2003, and this is um, the second. This is um, this is like the, the the little brother of Heathen. It's not quite as good, but it's not far off. This is his touring album, and this has a lot of rock songs that you can actually play live, and this is good album and of course he produced the comeback album from 2013 the next day which again is a, a wonderful album and this is a true double album and of course probably the saddest of the lot Black Star from 2015 15. It was released in 2016 just after his death, but it was all finished in 2015. Must have been difficult producing this one, knowing that he was uh, very ill and he was basically going to die. So, 2016, Black Star. 
and John also had a charge at the T-Rex ones but he wasn't able to show Tanks from 1973 this is my favourite T-Rex album and he's credited as co-producer on this Sink Galloway and the Hidden Riders of Tomorrow or A Cream Cage in August from 1974 and I remember seeing on one of the T-Rex uh, Facebook groups somebody was saying I think that Mark produced most of this himself because Mark Bowen fans are very very like that and Tony Visconti actually put it in with it I'm paraphrasing here something like did he F? He had nothing to do with it, he just wanted his name on it. So, uh, St. Galloway and the Hidden Riders of Tomorrow from 1974. From 1972, Ralph McTell, Not Till Tomorrow. Ralph McTell is, I always look at him as the English Tom Paxson. Very country, very folk, sorry, very uh, English folk, whereas Tom Paxson is either Canadian or American, I'm not sure. But he's like the English version of him, and then he went on to do children's songs as well as Tom Paxson. And he did a second album that I have of his called Easy, and I've had this in my collection for donkey's years. They're both very, very good albums, but you have to be in the mood for a while. I tell he's got that sort of sleepy voice, but good album and talking of Tom Paxson he produced Peace Will Come from 1972 uh, I absolutely adore the title track of this uh, it's the only reason I bought the album I bought it recently I used to have it in mp3 files and I saw it in the record fair and I bought it and it's a very 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 good album so this is Peace Will Come by Tom Paxson okay from 1985 I think, Moving Mountains by Justin Hayward. Um, this is not great actually, it's pretty poor. In fact Justin Hayward's solo albums are all pretty poor apart from Songwriter. So um, no, it's nothing to do with the sound, it's just they're not great albums so this is Moving Mountains. But he did produce two Moody Blues albums that I have. One is The Other Side of Life with the absolutely brilliant Your Wildest Dreams on it which is one of my favourite Moody Blue songs of all time and it's one of my favourite videos of all time I think it's fantastic and this is from 86 I believe uh, so this is uh, The Other Side of Life The Moody Blues and he also did the follow up which is actually a better album but nothing on it as good as Your Wildest Dreams and this is Sur La Mer and the single office is I know you're out there somewhere and the last one that hasn't been shown and this is Boomtown Rats and V Deep this is their fifth album and it's undoubtedly their worst album from 1982 I think it's 82 or 81 could be 81 but it's the follow up to Mon Mondo Bongo which wasn't that good to start with and then the one after this was in the long grass which wasn't great either but it was an improvement so that's a few more of the Tony Visconti ones I know I'm very late but I hope some other people do actually jump on this thread because I would like to see Rob you must have some of the later ones the 21st century albums I'm sure you have because there's a lot of artists that I've never heard of and I'm sure you have so have a wee look and see so anyway, that's me for now, um, and I hope to have another video quite soon. All the best, man. Right, bye bye.